Hello sports fans, Chip Whipley here telling you that uh, before you watch this video, uh, be sure you actually watch the actual episodes because there will be spoilers, spoilers will abound. So before you watch this, you'll want to watch all the episodes on the Lasercorn channel of D&D and all the episodes on the Jovenshire channel of D&D and there'll be links to both of those in the description so you can watch all of those. If you haven't seen them all, don't watch this video. Stop and do that first and then watch this video. Greetings sports fans and welcome back here to the Laser Corn channel and boy uh, do we have a roundup for you today. I am joined by my good friend and colleague Chip Whipley. Chip say hi. Chip Whipley here loving the quarantine life. I've got a quarantini and I'm not what? wearing pants. Yeah pants. Pants are overrated I think. I too have uh, the, the, the pants life is gone. Why? What's the point? I, I'm here and still present in my remote studio. Yes. Uh, uh, thanks to the quarantine. And sweet, sassy mangoes of Carolina, do we have uh, a season on our hands here. Let's get back through it. And I wanted to focus on two teams in particular. Uh, a group called the Fantastic Force and another called, uh, let, let's just call them the Condemned. And boy, uh, some strange draft picks here for each of these teams. Uh, but let's let's start with the Condemned, uh, so named because they were actually uh, forced to fight for their lives after being accused of crime. Bunch of misfits here. We've got a uh, a dwarf warrior, a druid, I'm sorry, a half elf druid, a, a full elf assassin, and a gnome kind of prankster fellow. What yeah, do you think not, of this lineup, Chip? Not a group that you would normally see together, nor should you see together. It seems mm -hmm. a little volatile to put this group together. Uh, you, is it that you don't like the mixing of the different races, Chip? Is that what you're concerned with? <coughs> oh, sorry, I'm choking on my quarantini here. Uh, yeah, 100%. Um, normally, I like to keep my dwarves with dwarves and elves with elves. But what really tickles my grinder is the fact that there is a half elf. What's happening here? What human falls in love with an elf and decides to intermingle their weird character traits together? It's like oh, pick a race. I love your outdated racism. By the ah. way, ex excellent choice on the Quarantini. I myself am drinking a uh, Quarantilla Sunrise Ooh, over here. Very yes. nice. Cheers it's to delightful. you, my good friend, Brad Radford. Mm -hmm. But let's jump right into this. Now, the Condemned uh, were matched up against, uh, I believe it was Team Dire Trolls, uh, opening up the season with that showdown. And uh, some strong leadership, I felt. Uh, by one of the members of the condemned. Let's take a look here at the first clip. And I would like to take to the front position. Okay. So I would like to be up front. And I'm like, get behind, get form up on me. Yes, definitely some strong leadership skills here. I think this is a man to look out. I'm sorry, a dwarf, a dwarf, a dwarf to look out to for look as out the for. season progresses. It, it's interesting when you have a situation like this where you have five, four individuals that have never seen or worked with, a, with each other before, and yet one of them has to stand above all. And for it to be the shortest of the members, I almost found a little surprising. Surprising? You're trying, yes. you're trying to say dwarfs can't be leaders there? Yeah, Chip, is that you know, they're saying? a little stubborn and you know, they got the hair on the ears. They don't really like to listen to other people. Well, I, I don't know I don't know if I agree with these generalizations you're making here, Chip. Let's play the next clip. Ducking down a little bit, I make eye contact with the king, having a clear line of sight as he is so up, and I use a command spell, and I tell the king, attack. Uh, okay. Uh, oh. So you were using your, your command. I'm using my command, and I'm creating a massive distraction in the stands, making the so king that's against assault the, those near him. Uh, a wisdom check? Oh, he can attack me. <laughs> Stop it. Um... <laughs> Because the audience is is chanting and yelling, not chanting, but they're yelling, the king can't hear you. Ooh, big swing and a miss there from Deborah. I had high hopes for this for this gnome, but I don't know. Uh, you know, first match of the season, and this is what we're seeing. Using their magical abilities to affect things outside of the fight themselves. Dumb, some might say. Even dumber when the person you're trying to control can't hear you. A classic rookie mistake, and you know, uh, this this Debra, I believe, just moved up from the minors, so we might see uh, we might see snafus like this coming out of this player a lot. But moving on, moving past that uh, one little gaffe, it seems that uh, that team condemned really came together and and really put on a show. I, I feel like they were crowd favorites. I'm actually going to raise up the dirt underneath Krulax to give him the height advantage so he can actually strike at some of the more vital areas. All right, well, now that they're up to us, I'd like to jump off this pillar and hit this first uh, troll in the face with my axe. All right, that's a hit. Roll for damage. Woo! 
Woo! You take a strong hit on his head and he looks woozy. And when you do that, the crowd pops and yeah. King Essius looks mad. Excellent assist by his teammate Sky. Uh, I really look forward to these two working together in the future. I really think they're forming a nice team dynamic. And boy, when he came down, Krulax, he really got the crowd off of their feet. <laughs> Uh, and, and rightfully so, when uh, when a dwarf gets going, it's hard to stop him. Exactly, couldn't have put it better myself, Chip, but no, let's not forget this other player who's flown a little bit under the radar here, Kaizen. Kaizen opened up very strong, very strong with a shuriken attack. Uh, perfect shot, perfect shot, excellent accuracy. Let's take a look. So this one makes it uh, in your range of shuriken, so it's now within 20 feet. That's a hit. Go ahead and roll uh, damage for me. Eight. You did eight Eight damage? Kai's in there, putting some points on the board. I think even the ref was taken aback by how deadly that attack was. And, and little should he have been surprised because Kaizen actually helms from the Milfwood Forest and everyone from Milfwood Forest really brings it hard. They do. They do indeed, Chip. Milfwood brings it hard. They bring you know, the I wood. actually spent some time in the Milfwood forests. Lost a lot of my 20s there. Woo! Did you, Chip? Yep. Are there some little chips running around that we should maybe... Uh, maybe, probably, but as long as they don't contact me, I don't have to pay <laughs> for them. I feel like you should be paying them some chip support or something. Uh, <laughs> One might say they're a chip off the old dad's block. Oh, oh Chip. You really are a deadbeat dad. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. But striking in the same motion with my other hand, I go for the inside of the kneecap okay. with my light hammer. Roll for it. Little Debbie. Trying to little slow Debbie. down this guy. Little Debbie, let's Come on, go. Little Debbie. Little Deb. Oh, no! 19, little Debbie. Uh, little Deb yeah, that's, that's a hit. Three damage. All right, so Deborah, uh, despite the initial gaffe, making a bit of a comeback here, trying to redeem himself in the eyes of his teammates. I think he did it. What do you say, Chip? You know, gnomes are full of surprises, those little, little fellas. And this one, Deborah Mustard, full of surprises as well. I agree, I agree. He's scrappy and he is not going to let himself be counted out. And going up against the creature, four times his actual size. And that is a number I am making up on the spot, but trusted as fact and still been able to hold his own. Just well played, well played. Yes. But don't count Team Dire Troll out just yet. They may have gotten swatted around a bit in the beginning, but they can come back hard and they can come back strong. Take a look. After the bite, he actually then tries to claw you. Oh, he's double attack. Oh! oh! Wait, what is, why, why? They're Dire Trolls, they attack twice. Ugh. Whew, those Dire Trolls are nasty once they get rolling. What do you think, Chip? See, in a game of D, and D, you're not only playing against the creatures, but the DM themselves, because you never know when they're going to make up rules on the fly. That's true, Chip. That's true. You never know what a, what a, what a ref's going to do in this situation. And sometimes uh, it doesn't go the way the players want. But, you know, when you mouth off to a ref, he might just get a double attack on you. Well, yeah, but I mean... Obviously, that's not fair play. The ref shouldn't be doing that and holding personal grudges. All's fair in D and D, and that's why we love it. I, I don't think that's a saying anyone oh, uses. Oh no! Chip. Read it in a book once. Good book. Beautiful book. Now, uh, Chip. Elsewhere in the league, we've got the Fantastic Force, and they're going to be facing off against Team Pirates. Uh, what do you think of this matchup? Uh, we don't have a group of, you know, scallywags like in the uh, the other team. So seeing a group of, you know, honest to God's people, uh, it, it, you know, it's going to be interesting to see that dynamic work at play. Interesting choice of words, Chip. You say God's people. One is actually a man of God. Uh, this Reichel Javis might be one to watch. Uh, uh, yes, of the, the nameless, faceless God. Yes, yes. Uh, he's got, he's got quite the impressive stats, and I'm really interested to see what this young man can do. Now, it's something you really don't see every day, a goblin wizard. Uh, great name, Steve the Goblin, uh, he goes by, and surprisingly, spry and full of magic. Yes, but kind of an unknown element. I don't think we've seen much of this Steve the Goblin. Uh, not like this Tiffany here. Now, Tiffany has been a name in the majors for a while, uh, a name that's recognized, and you're, it, she really brings some, some uh, credibility, I feel like, to this team. Really makes uh, these other teams out here stand up and take note. What do you think, Chip? Yes, the legends are true. Tiffany Tafani is not someone you want to mess with. Mm -hmm. 
And rounding out this team, we have uh, a bard, I believe? A, a pacifist bard, if nothing else. <laughs> Now I don't I don't know about this uh, this bard business uh, chip. You know I've always been one uh, for the more the more combat aligned classes. I'm not sure how this is going to play out, to be honest with you. Well, when you have an individual just following along and telling the story of his team and hurting with words, you'd really kind of think, is that going to be helpful against swords and shields? That's what I'm wondering myself. Uh, let's see how this plays out here. We have a we have a clip of the opening of this this matchup between the pirates and of course, the Fantastic Force. Oh no. I've heard of this fable, the Tiffany Tiffany. She did come Tiffany drops to the floor. She starts crying uncontrollably. She starts shaking go, and vibrating. All right, uh, that's her action right now. It's uh, right now. Next, <laughs> it's a good action. Next to you. I've read about this in a tome. I believe that is called a seizure. <laughs> <laughs> it's the reanimation. It's the reanimation. <laughs> Chip, I'm in shock. I don't know what to say. This is not what I was expecting out of a veteran like Tiffany. I expected her to maintain her composure much better than this. You know, that's why you don't really see lady dwarfs in combat that much. You just can't trust what they'll actually accomplish. I like how you're spicing up your racism with a little sexism there, Chip. That's great. Uh, you know, I, <laughs> I only can, can, can report on what I see here. <laughs> All right, and here's the first showing of Steve. I guess with Tiffany out of action for the moment, we're gonna have to rely on Steve, this unknown entity. Let's see what he can do. You must be dispatched, and I want to shoot a ray of frost at the closest one. Okay, uh, roll a d20, roll your attack. 13. All right, that is a hit, roll for damage. Uh, four points of damage plus slow. By the way, Steve would like to point out that I am in fact a goblin and I just did magic and nobody seems impressed. <laughs> Woo, excellent shot right out the gate for uh, young Steve. That was really uh, just right on the money. We might be looking at a real rookie of the year here. New to D&D, new to the class, new to everything, and somehow doing damage between before a veteran like Tiffany can get up there. Next up, stepping up to the plate, we've got uh, the one and only Reichel Javis. Let's see how he does. And I'm just gonna charge righteously towards whoever They're was hit enough, by yeah. that. And you I'm gonna run attack. And I'm gonna cleave his uh, which filthy one? soul in twain. So ten. Okay, that's a hit. You, you right. slice the me. diagonal range. It makes it about halfway through. Uh, he dead. Wow, Chip. He knocked that one right out of the park. Way to put some points on the board early. All my scouting reports indicated that this was the kind of play we would see from this man here. Ah, uh, yes. Points on the board and blood on the floor. You can't ask more from a cleric paladin like that. My Chip Whipley, did you used to be a bard in your old days? That was quite the verse you just threw together. Oh, I've been practicing on my loot a little <laughs> bit these days. I am very impressed. May, uh, I don't know, I think maybe perhaps you retired too early from the game. Maybe you should get back out there. You know, if there is a veterans game in the bard world, I might have to jump in there because, you know, the panties used to drop real hard for Chip Whipley the bard. I believe all those elf panties dropping in the Milfwood Forest. Especially yes, in I the Milfwood Forest, days. yes. Well, let's see what the bard can do. Like I said, I'm not a fan of bards myself, but I'm interested to see what this young Adonis can do. An untouched pirate stands. How far am I away? Uh, 15 feet. 15 feet, I back up five. Okay. <laughs> safe, safe. As good. I perform vicious mockery. Hey there, pirate. It seems you swung at my paladin friend. Well, I'm going to be a problem for you, for your mother is nothing but a charlatan and harlot. Lick on the bollocks, filleting the men. Two damage. Uh, he hears the words, he's like, not cool, man. Well, you know, I feel you need more than just trash talk in this game, but he seems to be getting the job done. I don't you know, know if I can quarrel with that. Sticks and stones may break some bones, but his words may, you know, cut the flesh a little. His words so cutting that they caused actual physical pain. I'm impressed. And here comes Tiffany though. She's shaken off that initial uh, panic attack or, or, or whatever episode she was having, and she is back on the field. Let's see how she does. Are you still shaking and weeping or? No, 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 no. A calm reform, Tiffany rises up. The smell of the blood fills the air and Tiffany grabs her ax, eyes set on the pirate directly in front of her, ready to attack. All right, uh, roll an attack. That's a hit. Um, roll for damage. Is nine? It's a nine plus five. Oh, nine plus five. Still a hit. Ten. Ooh. Holy crap. 
That's 13 damage. So you run up and you kill this, uh, this Using pirate. Using my great axe, I crack <laughs> both of his knees, pull him in and make him look me directly in the eyes and I tell him, I am Tiffany, realm defender, and I pull my axe out of his kneecaps and I smash it right into his face. Now, that is the type of play I expect to see from Tiffany Tiffany. She might have been able to get in there a little bit sooner, but seizures aside, 13 damage, 13 points on the board, that's nothing to scoff at. Even for a lady dwarf, very impressive. <laughs> yes. All right, up next we have a bit, uh, a bit of a diversionary ta tactic from Steve. Let's see what he's up to. And I'd like to uh, light it up using light. Okay. So the, it'll be a, a shining, glowing piece of meat. And I yell out, Holy light grenade! And I <laughs> chuck it at them. Uh, you've tricked three pirates into kind of like running for cover. Interesting play here by Steve. Uh, rather than just using one of his offensive moves, he decides for a little diversionary tactic. You know, a mage is capable of doing so many different attacks uh, to do damage. And you, you're really seeing Steve's inexperience here. Like, why distract? Why not just go for some killing blows? Well, it worked. It worked. And now uh, now the pirates are on the run, I feel like. And the pirates never really recovered from this. They were taken down and slaughtered. At the end of the day, they are a bunch of pirates. How much were they really good? They're, they're no, you know, ogre trolls or dire trolls that the, uh, the other team had to go up against. So maybe things were a little easy for the Forceful Four. Fantastic, fantastic force. force, but yes, I agree. Easy opening matchup for them. Uh, you know, they get, they were the home team. They got lucky, and they they uh, got an easy matchup, and they clean they mopped the floor with them. They swabbed they the deck with them. I guess they is what did. happened. <laughs> I, I see what you did there. <laughs> oh, thanks, Chip. Uh, pirate wordplay. Great, great, great. <laughs> All right, going now to the second match for the condemned. They are up against Team Guards. Uh, these guards out of Targus, uh, not to be trifled with. Uh, let's see how they open up. Now's the time! Axe bolus, go! This'll buy us some time! And I whip the axe bolus at the nearest soldier. Uh, I rolled a one on my, my axe bolus. Uh, it kind of like whips around your hands, and, and you just fall down. My goodness, uh, I was not expecting this out of uh, uh, someone such as Krulax. What a, what a swing and what a miss. Now, what a terrible think, whip. Uh, a master of axes would be able to utilize a simple, uh, rudimentary, elementary, really, axe bolas. Uh, yes, his odds of hitting with a throw like that were the same as Epstein actually killing himself. Yep. Now, very low. Yes, luckily Kaizen Voldra with just a perfect shot with those shurikens Eight damage, even the ref was shocked by the amount of damage she was able to do with those. Uh, let's take out some eyeballs. Here we go. We're just shrieking, attacking him. Uh, 13. That's Happy a hit. done. Ooh, it's a hit! That's a hit. Ho, 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 with eight damage. Uh, what? Yeah, hitting with the shuriken seems a little risky, but you know, sure, she can hit the captain. And the captain is, uh, is the star player over there on the guards. I, yeah. I I'm surprised he... He's so he's hurt this early in the match. Really, uh, as a spectator, did not expect to see that. Uh, you know, but maybe a dumb move from the captain not to go in front of all your guards. Yeah. But what to expect from a group he's... of rascals? Now he's bleeding like a little bitch. Yes. Oh, that plot character. We should have expected so much from him. But standout performance, I wanted to say, by Gary, uh, fighting yes. for the guards and really putting on a show. Yeah. Guy fighting me as well. Whoa! Oh, wow! Jovens! And just slices across and and uh, and nicks you in the beard. Ah! Not the beard! Not the, no. This dude dodged my attacks and is kicking my ass. I really feel like he's underappreciated within the soldier hierarchy. <laughs> Out of nowhere, uh, and every now and then, you see things in a D and D match kind of just go in a direction that no one was expecting, and this time it was Gary who became the star. Yes, I've even heard some locker room talk that the Condemned might actually be looking to pick up Gary if he ever goes free agent. Oh, Brad Radford hanging out in lockers again. <laughs> yes, at least I at least I went into the locker of my own accord this time. Not uh, like this in high time, school. much different than your time in high school. Yes, that was different. A different time. And also that time at 24-hour fitness. Yes, that that too.
Did you know some of those places aren't even open 24 hours? I right. did not know that. Now the druid actually got open on the field and set himself up for a nice little shot. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, I'm going to uh, leap using my super leap into the air to build momentum. And then I'm going to vine whip the barrel at the captain and the people helping him. Uh, it is lit and has been thrown uh, towards the front uh, line of, oh so behind the soldiers that you're fighting, towards the front line behind them. Oof, just perfect picture, perfect placement with that explosive barrel. I really like what he's doing out here. Yeah, I might call him Sky Jordan after seeing a throw like that. That's why you're the master of color commentary, Chip Whipley. Uh, but it really would all be for naught if not by this excellent shot by one Deborah Mustard. Uh, excellent shot with the Eldritch Bolt. From this area down, and I would like to aim That's specifically so for in between both the captain what? and the person who is grabbing him and helping him up. I want to blast in between them to make sure that, that the captain stays there. I want to disable Roll with him. advantage. It hits. Seven. Seven, uh, you... I did, I, I, I did do it in between them, so it's oh, okay if you were to separate he's seven, on. So we'll cut half damage. Uh, you took off his arm. Perfect. You took off the captain's arm. Oh, what a shot, what a shot. And according to my notes here, it looks like uh, the captain playing for the guards will be out for the season. Yeah. Uh, oh wait, I'm this... sorry, I'm sorry, slight correction. That doesn't say not he won't be out for the season. It says he will be out for ever. He'll oh, be out forever. forever. Ah, that is a career ending move right there. And I'm gonna give Deborah a little uh, sitting ovation because if I stood, you'd see I'm not wearing pants. Again, who needs them? Who needs yeah. them? Or underwear. Uh, I'm doing what they call the Winnie the Pooh right now. Disgusting, disgusting term for it, but it, it will probably stick. Just like my butt to this leather seat. With that, uh, the guards were pretty much done for after that. You know, uh, Gary survived, luckily, because we want to see him in the future. But uh, but the rest of the guards were really... Uh, oh, they were ambushed by the cultists, and that was that. A third party joining in on the game. You don't normally see a three-way, though I do believe that uh, Kaizen has seen a number of those coming from the Milfwood Forest. Always going back to that Milfwood Forest, aren't you, It's Chip? hard to leave there. Now between games here, we had a little uh, a player get picked up by the Fantastic Force, uh, Davis the Pigeon. I see a pigeon on the side of the street. It is mystical, as you said, sir, because normally they don't travel here. It reminds me of my hometown, where everything's dark, gray, and sad. Where is your hometown, Tiffany Tiffany? I thought you had no... 14. No uh, 14 plus the three. Yeah, you were able to grab the pigeon. Straight grab the bird, dog. Okay, you're gonna wanna wash your hands. Yes, I, it'll be interesting to see if this player even makes it off the bench. I'm, I'm curious to see if we'll see anything out of Davis the Pigeon. I wouldn't count him out. The, uh, he seems to be a fan favorite right now, and quite honestly, I don't know why. That has to be frustrating for the ref, I imagine. Oh, yeah, uh, you can see it in the ref's eyes. He's dying a little on the inside. All right, uh, now this time we're going to take it back over to the Fantastic Force. They're up against Team Goblin. Now, what do you think is going to happen here, Chip? Because I believe uh, Steve has some former squad mates on this team. Now, this is where you really see a game get interesting. When you got those hometown rivalries, when one outgrows the mediocre performance that their town has to offer and moves on, goes a different route, and then comes back to kill them. Yes, indeed, Chip. Let's see how this goes. You'll never make fun of me again. Eat this ray of frost. Uh, roll. That's a hit. Which one are you hitting? I uh, I cast the ray of frost on him. He like slowly freezes into place, and then like from a little distance away, I go, and he just shatters into pieces. Yeah. Now against the goblins here, they put on quite the showing. Uh, they pretty much rolled through these first goblins. What until uh, Tiffany Tiffany started showboating. Now I'm not a fan of this type of gloating uh, on the field after a kill. And it, it ended up costing her. She got jumped by an additional three goblins. And I take my great axe and using delicate edge that I recently sharpened, I pry open his eyeballs and slowly slice out each eyeball and spit my diseased venomous spit directly into his eye socket, dripping into his brain, letting him die a slow, painful, delightful death. <laughs> uh, because that took a while to do, uh, three uh, goblins have ran up to you. <laughs> Yeah, we did see a penalty. Uh, as in the NFL, you were not allowed to dance in the end zone for a celebration. It will cost you. Same here in the D and D. But the Fantastic Force were able to come back, thanks in no small part to Sir Reichel Javis. And look at this stance. He drops his shield to, to line this swing up. And man, I always say the best defense 
is chopping your opponent's head off. And he really, uh, really went for it with this one. Oh, Brad, you couldn't be more right with that particular offense. I'm gonna, in my drawback, drop my shield to take a two-handed swing. Okay. Is that fair? Dropping the shield, yeah. And uh, with a 19. Hey. So you cleave through and, and Ooh, take them both out. Oh, Sir Reckles! Ha-ha! Finally, it was down to just one goblin, uh, but Big Titty was his name, or Big... Am I get, saying that right? Big titties? Titties? Teddies? Who oh, really Teddy. knows when it comes to goblins? So, you're correct, Chip, of course. Big Teddy. Uh, now, Big Teddy apparently had a bit of a, a rivalry with Steve, as it would seem. Though I will throw in that Big Titties also comes from the Milfwood Forest. I'm sorry, I digress. Stop, stop talking about the Milfwood Forest, Chip. You will be fired by the network. <laughs> <laughs> I will most definitely be having a meeting with HR after this. Yes, and Big Teddy, uh, getting personal, hitting Steve with a headbutt. Uh, so his second attack is a headbutt. He gets two attacks? He gets two attacks. What? Uh, uh. yep, that would be plus two with the headbutt, so that's 16. Oh, Six damage. Okay, but BOOM! <laughs> <laughs> Teddy, you son of a bitch, you mother <laughs> Yes, when things get hot and heavy with a little hometown feud, you'd expect people to break a few rules. Yes, but nonetheless, less, uh, Big Titty or Big Teddy or whatever his name is did end up going down and the goblins were defeated and the fa Fantastic Force move on. Yes, the group of goblins got taken down like a group of goblins. Yeah, excellent analogy. Thank you. Going back now to the condemned against Team Bug Boys. Uh, now, the, the opening salvo here, the, the scorpions that Team Bug Boys sent out uh, we're not very effective, let's be real, Chip. Uh, yeah, no, when, uh, things seem to be kind of, uh, you know, off the cuff in this certain situation, but still dangerous and should be, uh, approached with caution. Krulak showed almost no caution as he exterminated, uh, these opening bug boys. Okay. Four, well, five. I jump, wow. I jump up into the air, both feet off the ground, and I just squish it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, we used to squish these things all the time, me and my cousin. <laughs> But the real jewel of their team is uh, Big Angry Chull. And uh, now Big Angry Chull did do some damage. He really stopped the Condemns forward momentum across the field here, Chip. Uh, yeah, the, the team got a little cocky and thought that the world was gonna go just in their favor, but little did they expect a giant honker attacking them. So as you guys are going down the minecarts, you're pumping, you're pumping, you're pumping, and they're like, we're doing it, we're killing scorpions, and you're like, hey. Yeah, I got one arm. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys hear a giant explosion in front of you uh, as some like the, the dirt wall shoots out to the side as like this tail kind of comes out. Um, and your guys' uh, mine cart hits it, so those two hit it, you guys kind of fall forward onto the tail. But it was Kaizen who went for a Guardians of the Galaxy uh, type move here, and just, uh, well, you gotta look at the clip, but it just didn't work out the way that Kaizen wanted it to. All right, we're gonna Gamora style. We're gonna run and slide and just go for the underbelly. Okay, give me an athletics check first. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's all my you like run, go to slide on your knees, and you just land hard. <laughs> uh, and flop down. Uh, my now, shoes are a little bit big. Yeah, I'm not used to them. Fun fact, this is actually one of the signature moves of some of the elves from the Milfwood Forest, sliding across on their knees. Uh, because it's such an experienced move, you'd think it would have landed a little bit more oomph. Oh, yes, Chip, yes. And hang on, uh, I'm getting a... Notification here. Uh, Chip, you are to report uh, to your supervisor's office as soon as this broadcast is over. Ah, yes, expected. Despite that failed by Kaizen, Team Condemned actually perseveres, taking out the Bug Boys and moving on. Now, in the matchup of the Fantastic Force against Team Cultus, it was Sir Reichel Davis leading the charge, and boy, did he storm across the, the field. Real leadership we're seeing out of that one there. Not only storming across the field and attacking those cultists, but also healing his teammates. I gotta do the right thing. I'll be like, watch yourself. Adonis, <laughs> feel better. Yes, really kind of seeing all aspects of a paladin. He's strong, he's tanky, and he's got the lay on hands. Bet you thought I was gonna make a sexual joke about lay I, on hands. I, I thought, yes, I was waiting for you to say about something about him getting handsy in the Middlefoot Forest, but you didn't say it, Chip. No, 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 no. Not gonna go there. Not gonna go there. Not this time. Uh, he did seem to strike up a bit of a rivalry with one of the cultists. Uh, actually, uh, the cultists seem to be dogging him the entire match. Let's take a look. 
<laughs> uh, hit you for four damage. Whatever. Uh, you take two damage. Of course I do. That was the same guy that got you twice. Oh, you, you're, you're <laughs> so incredibly <laughs> dead. Wow, I, I don't know if it's good to be provoking a star player like Reichel Javis like that. No, uh, it's it's really unfortunate for for the. <clears throat> no, it's really unfortunate for the cultists to kind of get a little cocky here, and we might see it bite them in the ass in the end. Yes, Just yes. like I would like to have someone do to me. No, nope, stop talking. No, no. Hey! Oh! I couldn't get away from it. Brought it yes. back. Uh, but eventually, the cultists were just no match uh, for the teamwork and cooperation we saw here out of Team Fantastic Force, and they move on and advance to the next round. Yes, and I, as I finish my quarantini and lick it dry, I would like to state that this battle ends with Steve wearing a certain trinket around his neck, uh, a little action figure that was actually given to fan favorite Gary. Hmm. Yes. Yes. I, I, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, that was clearly Gary's trinket, and I'm not sure what this uh, what this Steve character is doing with it. Did he leave it on the ground because he hated it? Did he die in battle? The world may never know. Uh, but I'm pretty sure they will know because they're demanding to know. So I think 120% it might pop up in conversation again. Yes. I, I, would, I would expect to see Gary again. That's, that's just my prediction as a humble D&D analyst. So humble, sir. Uh, and then lastly, both teams uh, squared off with this uh, Team Guardians, Team Temple Guardians. And uh, uh, yes. Team Guardians charges across the field and strikes early against the Condemned. Let's take a look. So he falls forward and hits you and you both tumble backwards and you're both now, you're holding on to the, the side, uh -huh. and he's holding on to your leg with the spikes way down Oh, the right, the pit that was behind <laughs> us. <laughs> Oof, you hate to see a fan favorite get knocked on their ass. Just kidding, you love to see it. Well, I don't love to see it, Chip. Maybe you do. No. Let's not and, generalize and, and we got and so speak for close everyone. to actually taking out the team member for the entire season. I ah, close. I, I don't know about close. I mean, one Kru would have been Krulak. so surprised Krulak on how was, poorly this cruel act actually much in can control perform the situation under the pressure. Time. Let's move on. Let's move on. And a uh, a very surprising play by this uh, Deborah Mustard actually puts the condemned back in control of the match. Let's take a look. Can I do my magic hand, and I'm gonna find this creature's butthole, and I'm gonna put my finger right up it real quick. It'll have no idea. It's gonna be so scared. Now, I haven't seen a move like this since the last time I visited. Yes, you guessed it, Burbank, California. Uh, so what, what we are really witnessing here is a, uh, is a rookie finding new ways to play the game and winning. Yes, I'm not sure. I'd have to check the code of conduct, but I'm not sure that was a completely legal play there, Chip. Ah, but he got away with it. And <laughs> yes, just like did. my lawyer said to me after I left the Milfwood Forest for the fourth time, you should not try that again. But Krulax was not the only teammate uh, that uh, Deborah helped out. He also... Uh, performed a save on his teammate Sky right here as he was in trouble about to be hurled off a cliff. Let's take a look. Well, as I drop down using the extra weight of my force, I slam right down on the creature's toes. Okay. Oh, I nice. think it'll stop him in, in place. Getting that into that. 15 plus 3, eight, uh, 18. That's, that's a hit. Again, I'm gonna give a little sitting O because of the whole Winnie the Pooh situation I've got going on because this player Deborah cannot be stopped, saving the day at every corner they possibly can, and we might just see the MVP of this entire series right here in Deborah Mustard. Sitting O sounds like something you maybe gave to someone in the Milfwood Forest as well. Ah! Hey! Ho ho! <laughs> and, uh, uh, it's a serious condition. I'm, I'm taking also medication daily. being told to report to my supervisor as soon as this broadcast ends. Now, Team Guardians here with a very strong start against the Fantastic Force, coming out early and really hitting Steve hard. Let's take a look. Uh, he actually uh, picks you up over your uh, over his head Aww. and then throws you uh, down on the ground. You are prone and you take. Uh, two damage. Ow, oh, you son of a... Yeah, Steve, just being a mere little goblin, him knowing magic had nothing to do with these guardians as they picked him up and threw him around like he was garbage. Oh, now calling goblins garbage. Again, your racism shows right through you, Chip. Right through you. I actually believe that throughout the lands, all goblins are, are kind of seen as, you know, I, You cut off garbage. there, but I, I can only assume, Chip, that you were saying all goblins are garbage. Yes, yes. But even their strong starts uh, against Steve could not prepare them 
For this man, Sir Reichel Javis, once again, as strong on defense as he is on offense. Let's take a look. Another strike on, on Sir Reichel uh, for 17. Not even close. Yeah, I mean, honestly, a little close, but not. not <laughs> <laughs> it almost seems unfair how strong this paladin is. His <laughs> AC is at levels we've never seen in a match, and I'm starting to think the man might juice. His stats are insane. His stats are, yes, some, some sort of testing needs to be in place for Sir Michael Javis, I agree, because yeah. this man is inhuman. And he's yeah. a human An AC class. of 18, I don't think so. Yes. What kind of testing is not in place to see clear cheating like this? Yes. I'm thinking he's he's uh, potion doping. I don't know. Potion doping? Yes, uh, it is. We've heard that there are some serious issues in the league with this, and I feel yeah. like Sir uh, Reichel D Javis should be tested. Uh, and finally, the Guardians are finished off by uh, Steve actually getting a, a bit of revenge for what happened in the opening of the match there. Steve with the magic missiles actually finishes off the Guardians. Hmm, I would like to use magic missiles. Snarky McMoot. I don't remember what I said. Okay. <laughs> Uh, your magic missile. <laughs> and he just crumbles, uh, just like you saw uh, the other one crumble. Hers crumbled in a very different way. Only one person puts hands on me, and that's me! And also Reichel James. Yeah, you don't keep Baby in a corner or Steve the Goblin thrown to the side. And goblins are pretty much babies. Yes, I see where you're going with this. Mm -hmm. Baby trash. Yes. Is, is if you put the two together. Yeah. Baby trash. And so both of these teams come out of their seasons undefeated, setting up uh, quite the finale for the Horn. Uh, these two teams will be going head to head for the Horn at some point. Unfortunately, we're a little bit on pause here because of the coronavirus. Uh, just like a, a rain delay might uh, delay a game, the coronavirus has delayed this D&D matchup. Yes, it's unfortunate that the coronavirus has slowed us down, but I, as an individual, am not too worried about it, for in my times and adventures through the Milfwood Forest, I have gained so many diseases that I am now immune to most diseases, and the coronavirus has not slowed me down yet. Excellent, Chip, excellent. I, I mean, there's no one I'd rather work with, so I'm glad to hear you're unscathed by this coronavirus plague that's affecting the land. I myself am also unharmed by it because I, I simply don't believe in it. So, uh, <laughs> yes, so... Uh, we'll be, it's I'm like sure a we'll female be warrior being effective in battle. Yes, it I'm doesn't sure we'll exist. we'll be commentating together for a long, long time to come. Okay. Uh, uh, unless our trips to HR mean the end of us. Yes. So for Lasercorn Broadcasts, this has been Brad Radford alongside... Chip Wibbly Dibbly. Signing off. Hey, watch the D&D series. You click here and then there's other boxes. I'm tired. Good night.